Hi everyone! I am in the mood to vent because it's that time of year when we start looking for our next planners. What will 2020 bring? Is there something out there that will help me be more productive or have a better design aesthetic or cheaper for a better quality book? There are so many exciting feelings that we have as we go through the aisles at Barnes & Noble or we're at Michael's or we're in a wonderful indie bookshop looking at new journals and planners, or we're online sifting through all the options for 2020 calendars on Amazon. And inevitably, every single year, my same pet peeves crop up because the planner designers apparently aren't listening to me. So I am making this video begging planner companies to pay attention to some of the seriously annoying things they do when they put their planners together. Here's number one. This is a Clever Flox planner. It's a really cool, nicely bound, very well made, great paper planner. However, the monthly section starts on Sunday. The weekly section, which has tracking for every week, starts on Monday. Lack of consistency. In something like this, where it's just these tiny little habit trackers, it's not quite as annoying. But what about the planners who have great big blocks of calendars for months that start on Sunday, and then they have the columns for the weeks, and those start on Monday? It makes it really hard when you're flipping back and forth. Perhaps you're moving things from a forward planning area in the monthlies to actual planning as it's happening in the weeks. And you flip and you're used to, okay, Wednesday is here. Oh, well, now Wednesday's over here because it's shifted because it starts with Monday. Or the weekends, you know, you're focused on the weekend and here you're, you've got Saturday where it ends on the monthly and then you flip here and the whole weekend is on the right side of the page. It's annoying. Just stick to one system in one book. Is that too much to ask? All right. Planner pet peeve number two. This is a big one, and so many companies make the mis this mistake. There are plenty of people out there who like it, and good for you. I'm glad you have planners that meet your needs, but I think the vast majority of us complain about this. That is when you have Saturday and Sunday taking up the same block. So here's Monday with all its nice space, Tuesday, nice big empty block. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they count just like the others. And then you get to Saturday and Sunday and they go, nah, nobody's doing much. We'll just split those in half. What? All right, first of all, we're in a society where a lot of people don't work nine to five Monday through Friday. Many, many, many people are working on the weekends and they need a spot to put their plans. Flip side. You work Monday through Friday, you do the same thing every day. Things go in the, the planning area. You've got tons of stuff to do on the weekends when you're not at work. You've got to go to the grocery. You've got to drop things off at the cleaners. You need to mark what time the cleaners close because they're probably not open on Sunday. You've got three kids all with different basketball schedules and most of those games happen on the weekends. How are you supposed to fit that into that little squish space? So please people, Give Saturday and Sunday their respective due. Allow them to breathe. Allow them to have the same amount of space as the rest of the days of the week. Here's another example of that. This was in the monthly section. Now we move to the weekly section. We've got all this nice space for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Ah! Then we hit the weekend and they've split them. What if I have a much busier life on Saturday than I do on Wednesday. Too bad, they don't care. Or if you're doing memory keeping in your planners, typically our fun, social, wonderful things that we want to journal about happen on the weekends. So give us the space to record those properly. So Gallery Leather, I'm not trying to completely throw you on the, under the bus. I love your notebooks and your journals. The binding is amazing. They're made in the USA. They have great paper. They're fun to use, but not with these layouts. All right. My third pet peeve is when monthlies 
don't have enough blocks. And so, for example, the 23rd and 30th and the 24th and 31st have to be squished together. Here's an example of that. This was October 2017 in a monthly layout in a gallery leather notebook. And all they would have had to have done was squish this up just a little bit so you could add another line here. But they didn't. So not only does Saturday and Sunday have to share a space, but now Monday the 23rd and Monday the 30th, Tuesday the 24th and Tuesday the 31st all have to be squished together. I mean, look, Halloween only gets a teeny tiny little square. We have to have room to draw our pumpkins, right? All right, so give us an extra line. Fourth pet peeve. This is Astology 365. If you've watched my videos, you know it is my favorite notebook on the planet. It is the best paper for my needs. I absolutely love it. I can watercolor in it. I can put acrylic paint in it. I can use pencils, pens, markers. This paper just takes everything that I throw at it, but it's Bible paper thin. Hear that crunch? It's wonderful. There's one problem. Stology doesn't make any kind of a book, notebook, planner that has pre-printed calendar pages. My theory is that if Stology could make a notebook that was very similar to the layout of a Hobonichi Techo Cousin or a Jibun Techo Biz with the weekly columns, and then they gave us 365 pages of blank gridded notebook paper to use just to our heart's content for notes and journaling, they would sell out in 10 seconds. But for some reason, they don't. So my pet peeve is when a company comes up with the best paper, but they don't maximize their product line. <laughs> All you have are these gridded notebooks. That's it. There's no other choice. I would love to buy Astology that had just ruled lines just for writing, but they don't do that only have the gridded journals. So pet peeve number four, when the best paper can't be used as a planner. All right, and pet peeve number five, coils. Coils, I hate coils so much that I don't even have a planner that has coils, so I had to show you this notebook that I got. It's Pro Art Artist Tools and Supplies. I got it to review. It's just sitting on my bookshelf. I'm not going to take it anywhere with me. But a planner likes to go with you. It likes to be dropped in your tote bag and stashed in your purse and thrown on the car seat. And these coils tend to not hold up through that process because either they aren't made very well and they, look at this, they bunch together like that and they get out of whack and then it's hard to turn the pages properly. Or they catch on things like the top part, you know, is a little wonky and it gets caught on things in your bag or it's like a trap and things fall in it. So coils, pet peeve number five. All right, I want to know in the discussion section what things bug you the most when you're shopping for planners and notebooks. I'd love to hear your comments. Thanks so much for watching. I'd say if you found anything in here helpful, please click like, but let's be frank, this is not a helpful video unless you are a planner maker and you are taking these wonderful thoughts into consideration as you build for me the perfect planner, hopefully to be distributed in 2021. You've got a year. Do well. I'm watching. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.